All right. So LPES, good morning. I am so excited to start off our week of mindfulness at LPES together today. And along with celebrating mindfulness this week, we are also celebrating something called Red Ribbon Week. And Red Ribbon Week is a time where we talk about making healthy choices, talking about the things that we can do for our bodies or the things we put into our bodies that are good and healthy, like nutrition, some good food, uh, water, exercising, moving our bodies in whatever way feels comfortable, whether it's walking or running or doing jumping jacks or playing a sport. So we're going to be talking a lot about the different ways we can care for our bodies, the different ways we can tune into our bodies and see what's going on, and the different ways that we can make sure that we're doing everything we need to to be our best selves, whatever that might look like. Each person's best self is going to be a little different. And the things that work for me or the things that work for you might be very different than from the things that work for other people. So it's kind of figuring out what it is that we can do for ourselves that makes us feel good, that makes us feel healthy, that makes us feel happy. So talking about mindfulness. Mindfulness is one of the ways that we can truly help ourselves to feel the best way possible. When we're practicing mindfulness, it means that we're tuning into what we're feeling. And this happens in two different ways. So the first way that we're talking about tuning into what we're feeling is actually what we're feeling, what feelings or emotions we're going through. So if we're feeling happy, if we're feeling sad, if we're feeling frustrated or scared or nervous. And sometimes we're feeling these feelings and we don't even know where they came from. Maybe you wake up in the morning and for some reason you're feeling a little nervous or you're feeling a little sad. Maybe you wake up and you are feeling super excited that it's Monday and you're ready to start your day. Whatever it might be is fine. The other way that we're tuning into how we feel when we're practicing mindfulness is we're actually tuning into what our body is feeling like. So I want to start with that right now. Wherever you are, however you're seated, I want you to notice one thing that you feel in this moment. Could be the feeling of the chair is supporting you. It could be the feeling of cold air on your hands, especially in school. It's a little chilly in here this morning. It could be the feeling of the clothes you're wearing on your skin or your hair, touching your shoulders if you have long hair like I do. Whatever it might be, I want you to just find one thing that you are physically feeling this morning and focus in on it. So hopefully you found that one thing that you can feel. One thing that is um, helping us to kind of tune into what we're feeling. And if you just joined us, I saw our numbers just jumped up a bit. We're just getting started with our mindfulness activities, talking about the thing we can do. So we're tuning into that one sensation, whether it's your chair, your clothes, the feeling of the air on your skin, whatever it might be. Now you might be saying to yourself, Ms. Hepler, that's fine. I can feel the feeling of my hands on my desk. I don't really understand how this helps me though. When we tune into those things, those little clues or those little cues that our body is giving us about our environment, it helps our brain to stop focusing on all the other stuff. Through that, it helps our brain to kind of move through whatever that feeling is. It's oftentimes that we get stuck in a feeling, right? Maybe we're feeling really angry. We don't even know why. And it's hard for us to move past that feeling of being angry of being angry, <laughs> being anger. I like to think about our feelings. I heard this over the weekend. I like to think about our feelings almost like being in a tunnel, right? If we're feeling really sad one day, it's like we're going through a tunnel. And if we stop in the middle of that tunnel, we get stuck. But we need to let ourselves to keep going and to allow ourselves to feel whatever it is we're feeling so that then we can move past it but then we can move on to other emotions. Because the great thing about our emotions, my friends, is that they never stay for too long. Think about this. If you look outside right now, I think you're gonna see from here, I can see kind of gray clouds. It's kind of chilly out. It's not super pleasant. That's not the worst, it's not raining, right? But it's definitely cloudy. Now, think about this past weekend. Was it cloudy this whole weekend? No. Was it cold this whole weekend? No, it was sunny and beautiful at points. Our feelings and emotions are just like the weather. 
they stay here for some time and eventually they pass. The tough thing can be figuring out what to do in the moments that we're waiting for those feelings to pass. Not trying to rush through them, not trying to push them down and not think about them. It's okay if we feel unpleasant feelings. It's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel scared. It's okay to feel sad. But it's teaching ourselves, giving ourselves the tools we need to relax as those uncomfortable feelings are happening until, just like the weather, they change again. Now, the best way to do this, or maybe the easiest way, sorry, I have something in my eye, the easiest way to start doing this is very simple. And it's something that I think I've done with all of you already this year at some point. And that is simply by breathing. And this does two things for us. One, it gives our body plenty of oxygen. And when we have more of that oxygen, the oxygen can help flow to our brain. And when our brain has more oxygen, when it has more blood flowing to it, it's going to calm itself down. It's going to calm down our heart rate. So if our heart is beating fast because we're scared or nervous, it's going to slow that down as, as well. The other reason breathing is so important is exactly what we did earlier. When I asked you to feel the things around you, to tune into those, those various things, we were paying attention to our body. When we're paying attention to our breathing, it's the same idea. By focusing on your breathing, it's helping us to really pay attention to what we're feeling in our body, and it helps us to kind of forget about all the other nonsense that's going on up here. Now, that's not to say that it's easy. Sometimes even when we're just doing a breathing exercise, our brain is going a mile a minute, right? Thinking about everything we need to do or things that are coming up or things that are making us nervous. But with practice, just like with anything, with practice, it gets a little bit easier. So today, from day one of mindfulness at LPES, I wanted to start just with some super simple breathing activities. And this is kind of a review for my older kids, but it's also good for the younger ones who don't have as many breathing activities in their toolkit yet. I was talking about this with a student the other day. We're almost building these toolkits, just like you have probably on or near your desk right now. You have a toolkit with your scissors and your crayons and a pencil and a pencil sharpener in there. And those are all the tools you need for the day to get through. What we're doing when we're talking about these different kinds of breathing activities is we're building up a toolkit, a mental toolkit, a toolkit for our mind of strategies and things we can use when we're having those tough emotions. And we need to just sit with those emotions for a bit until they eventually, like the weather, change. So let's start with one of my favorites. We've probably done it a bunch of times together, but I think it is a great one because you always have your hands with you and you always have your lungs to breathe. It is five finger breathing. So we have our hand, we take our other hand with our pointer finger and we start at the base of our thumb. And hopefully my older students remember how we do this. You are slowly, not quickly, slowly going to trace up your finger, breathing in through your nose and then trace down, breathing out. Now, some quick things before we do, before we do it, making sure when you're breathing in, you're breathing in through your nose, if you can, and then breathing out through your mouth. We're not doing this. That's not gonna make you feel more relaxed. That's gonna make you feel even more stressed. <laughs> so we're nice and calm, shoulders are back, sitting up nice and tall, hand is out, other hand goes. And let's do this one together, my friends. Breathing in and out. Inhale. Exhale. Keep going. Nice job. Now, when you finish with that, are you always going to feel better right away? No. You might still be feeling nervous. You might still be feeling really angry and being in a place where you might make a bad choice. And so maybe you don't just do it once. Maybe you have to do it twice. And do the exercise again. That's fine. However many times you need to, to get yourself at a place where you're a little bit reset and you're able to focus and listen to what's going on around you in class. Now, the thing that I love about five finger breathing or really any of our breathing exercises, I was saying this to our students the other day when I came in for lessons, 
Do you need money to do these things? No. Do you need to go to a certain place? No. Breathing is completely free and it's something you can do at any point. And for the most part, people around you won't even know that you're doing it, that you're taking these nice, calming, deep breaths for yourself. So it's a great way for you to kind of reset. If you're in the middle of a math test and your brain is starting to freak out because you can't get the answer, taking a minute to quietly do some deep breathing exercises, get that brain calmed down, get your heart rate calmed down, and then going back to the test and trying it again. All right, let's do another one. My other one that I love to do, and a lot of students say that this one is one of their favorites for some reason. I guess it's just one that you can remember easily is square breathing. Now with me, I have a piece of paper, but that's only to help us all do this together since we're not sitting in the same room. So it's a little bit easier than me just kind of tracing. So I have a square here. You do not have a square in front of you, I imagine, but you're just going to either do this up in the air or you could do it on the desk that's in front of you or the table or your lap, wherever it is that you are, totally fine. With square breathing, there's a few different ways of doing it. What I like to do is I like to breathe in Hold at the corner for a sec and then breathe out. Hold at that corner for a second and breathe in. Hold and out. Beautiful. Let's do that one one more time together. Ready? Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Nice, you can go back to breathing at your own pace. The key to all of these is it's not a race, right? We're not going <laughs> It's not gonna help you feel better and you might look a little silly like I just did if you're doing it that way. But doing it nice and slow helps us to calm ourselves down, helps us to focus on something that's not the stuff going on in our brain and it's going to help our heart rate to also slow down and just be a little bit calmer, a little bit better. All right, last one that I wanted to do with you for today. And this one I think is perfect for a day like today when it's a little chilly and especially in the fall when we're having all these fun different kinds of drinks like hot cider or hot chocolate. If you went to a farm over the weekend or went pumpkin picking, maybe you had one of those nice, fun, warm drinks to kind of make you feel a little bit cozy while you're out in the cold. So I want you to pretend and for this one, I don't even have a visual. I'm just going to pretend with you. I want you to pretend that you have your hands wrapped around a nice warm cup of whatever it is that you'd like to drink. If it's coffee, if you're a grown-up, <laughs> if it's hot cider, if you're a kid or even a grown-up, I love hot cider too. Or if it's a nice warm hot chocolate with marshmallows, whatever it might be. I want you to really picture it in your mind. And you're going to try and play a little trick on your senses here. Because as we hold our cup of whatever it is, you're going to breathe into your nose and you're going to pretend to actually smell it. Let's do that together. And then I want you to pretend like it's really hot and you're going to blow on it to cool it down. Let's do that together again. Breathe in and pretend to smell it. Blow it off to cool it down. Let's do that two more times. Breathe in. Smell whatever that yummy goodness is and blow out. Last one. And out. I don't know about you, my friends, but after doing all those activities, I feel like I came on to this YouTube Live today. I was a little nervous. Is it gonna work? Are my students gonna be able to hear me? Is everyone gonna listen? What am I going to talk about? And I feel like my voice, I was talking really quickly and animated and, and taking those deep breaths, it makes me feel a little bit more calm. It makes me, a grown-up, your school counselor, ready to kind of face her day a little bit better than I was before. So I'm hoping that if it can help grown-ups, it can also help all of you whenever you need it. Taking those nice deep breaths, doing what you need to do to, making your, to make yourself feel as healthy and as happy as possible. So my friends, last thing before I send you on your way, each day of our mindfulness at LPES week, we're going to have a little challenge. And today's challenge is to think about those three exercises that we did today, whether it was square breathing, five finger breathing, or pretending like you had hot chocolate. And picture, pick which one you think could help you the best. Which one that when you're feeling those tough feelings later on, 
you're able to do this activity right away, pull it out of that toolkit that we were talking about and use it to calm yourself down as you're moving through those emotions. Don't get stuck, let them keep moving. And if you can come up with your own breathing, excuse me, breathing activity, even better. If there's something that you're thinking, oh, maybe I could do this, you can be whatever you want. However, you can get those nice deep breaths in. All right, LPES, I hope you all have a wonderful Monday. Not with you tomorrow on Tuesday, but Wednesday is actually going to be our Panther Pride meeting for October. So we'll be sending that out, and I'll be popping up on there with some more mindfulness activities for us to do. So until Wednesday, have a great day, my friends.